Hi, uh, in this video, uh, we will be seeing like uh, how to debug a C sharp code in uh, sharp develop IDE. So let us see like what outcomes have been listed for today's videos. The learning outcomes associated with uh, this uh, session of video would be to make sure that once a student goes through this video or any, any participant goes through this video, uh, he or she will, should be able to debug a sharp develop code using uh, a sharp develop ID. So when we talk about a sharp develop code, it could be like a C sharp, it could be VB.NET or it could be any .NET supported language. But for this video, to the not uh, when we are using sharp develop IDs uh, debug layout, uh, we will be more uh, focused on the concept specially called as step into, step over and step out. At the same time, while going through step into, step over and step out process, we will be even be interested in exploring the variables in debug perspective as well. So why do we need to explore variables in debug perspective? Because most of the times when we do some kind of uh, ma like mathematical arithmetic or some kind of processing of a data, we always store them in a variables or it could be even an array of variables as well. So to make sure the variables have been assigned proper values is one of the very uh, crucial uh, uh, part of a debugging process. So let us do an hands on. So what we'll be doing is we'll be switching to sharp develop and uh, we'll uh, proceed ahead from there on. So let me switch to sharp develop. My ID is a blank here. Uh, I'll create a project. And in this project, and we all know that before we create a project, we need to create a solution. So let me create a solution first. And uh, let us call, and we will make it as a console application just to make things simple. And we'll call it as uh, linear search, since we will be using linear search as a use case to debug our program. So the name of my project is linear search. And rest all I have kept it as default. And I'll click on create button. So it will create the solution and under that a project will be created. It will also add a default file program.cs. So just to have a clean view, I'm deleting the auto generated comments and I'll increase the font. Okay, so looks font is legible here. Okay, so now, now let us uh, write the program. And once we write the program, then we'll talk about a concept called as a breakpoint. Uh, what are breakpoints? and what's the role of breakpoints in uh, debugging process. So I need to search an integer array. So I'll take a key element. So let us say I, I'll decide a value. For, for example, let us make the key value zero. And then I'll take an integer array. So I'll take array of integers. And let me initialize that here itself. So to declare an array, we'll use this array center and uh, I'll initialize it with a few elements in it. For example, I'll keep 2, 3, 4, 7, and 0. So in my case, if you are talking about the use case of linear search, 0 is present in that. So I need to, uh, let's let's write a program. Like for example, this program will uh, output true, boolean true, if the key element is found in the array of integers. If the element is not found, it will print false. So what we'll do is we'll declare one more variable that would be boolean boolean is element present so by default i'll say element is not present false i kept it as false then in order to search to an entire array uh, we'll use a for each loop here in dot net so here i'll say for each int temporary in uh, array of integers if temporary values equal to our key element. If it is equal to our key element, then uh, what we'll do is we'll set is element to true and we'll break the loop. Okay. So once I break a loop, so when I'm out of this loop structure here, so let me write this code properly. Okay. So once I'm out of this, I'll be checking the value of a key. Sorry, it, it can't be a key as per our code it should be is element so I'll check the value of this is element is see sometimes this auto completion might uh, so in such a cases better it's always you cut and paste it directly 
so this sometimes it becomes issue with sharp build-up because its auto completion feature is not that up to the mark when we compare it with visual studio so if is element present i'll put a console dot right line i need to print the element i'll directly print is element okay once again let me fix okay let us do one thing we this was not what we wanted let me let us do let us call as uh, element found and if it isn't so if is element boolean variable remains false even after iterating to an entire array it's an indication that element is not present so in that case we'll do a console dot write line and we'll print a message element not found fine so let us first execute this code and let us see like okay now uh, if we run this program it would be quite easy for me to uh, say whether the program is working or not but what I'll do is uh, we will try to debug rather than executing the program. So here I would be interested to know like what is the state of a program in the mid of execution or at the end of execution. Remember in order to stop the program during its an execution and explore the values of various variables at that moment and explore how the control flow is there like changing the value of that variable during in execution it can it can be facilitated by a special feature of many of the ideas uh, rather than calling many of ideas almost all language runtime and all of language runtime specific ideas they do support the feature this feature is called as inserting breakpoint the name of breakpoint itself is quite self explanatory so when i say i am inserting a breakpoint so if i want to insert a breakpoint where so what i'll do is here my element is searching for all so what i'll do at this moment of break here at this line, the selected line which I have selected, I'll put a breakpoint. So what happens is whenever the, the line of execution is at this instruction, at line number 16, your execution just pauses. And your debugger, what it does, it, uh, it sh shows you up all the values of variables at this point, And it also sh lets you change the values of these variables as well. We call it as watch window. So in a watch window, we can list out a names of variables whose values we are interested in exploring at that midst of ex execution where I've inserted breakpoint. So here, now I, now I want to insert a breakpoint at line number 16. So what I would be doing is to select the line or just put your cursor there and click on debug here. So I clicked on debug menu and under debug menu, you will find a sub menu called as toggle breakpoint. So click on that. Yes, the breakpoint is inserted. So this, this is this is what we call it as breakpoint. So now the moment I inserted a breakpoint, now instead of running the program, we'll click on debug the program. And now you can just uh, I would I would just uh, uh, ask you all to uh, follow th the process from now on a little bit carefully because our windows would be changing a lot of uh, new windows would be opening here. So uh, we have set a breakpoint here. Now we'll go to uh, debug and I'll run this program by clicking F5. Now I'll not run without debugger. So before we debug this program, let us build the application just to ascertain that we don't have any errors in this. So I'm clicking on build solution. Okay, so I, we have some errors, like maybe we might have missed something for each temporary, I think maybe it's in, sorry, I, I missed the syntax here. So let me rebuild once again. Okay, so build finished successfully. So it's not colon like I was just uh, writing a Java based syntax, but it's an in it's a for each syntax. Okay, so the program has built fine. It means that I don't have errors in this code. So now I can uh, initiate a debugging process. Now I'll click on run. Remember, I'm not clicking on run with a debugger. I want to debug this. So I'll click on run and I have already a breakpoint inserted at line number 16 to stop my execution of program at that point. So I'll clicking on run. Now you can see that like the, the whole windows have just uh, changed and you can see that here I have a new window called as call stack window. The other the project window, the classes, the output window remain same. But you can see that here there's a new window the, where I'm moving my mouse, the, the cursor where I'm moving. This the window was newly created here. So under this you can see I have a call stack. So it gives me the name of uh, my program and if there had been a branching and all further things in this it would have shown you some tree like structure where you can expand every point there. And here I have a watch window and here I have a console. So now 
what i am more interested in so so my uh, execution stopped at point at this line number 16 and you can see this arrow indicating that the my current point at which my execution stopped so from here onwards i want my debugger to continue execution and before a value of well so i'll click on add watch and i'll list out the name of uh, this value temp so the temp value is this i'll add one more variable to my watch and i'll call it as key okay and one more value and i'll call this as is element present it's by default true okay because it was set as true so now uh, my execution stopped at this point i want this execution to proceed further then here i have a few choices so the few choices are step over step into or step out so the meaning of step over step into step out is let us suppose the line at which i am right now my execution is pending had that line contained a function call and if i click on step over what my debugger would do is debugger would execute the function call and it will move from that line on if i say step into and had the line where i had a breakpoint been a function call step into will take my debugger's control into that inside function so i would end up uh, debugging even the function deeply into its level and the moment when i'm debugging functions deep by using step into menu at a point if i feel no i don't have any uh, problem with the function and i want to continue with debugging my earlier program i would click on step out so step out would take me uh, my con debugger's control from a function to the function which are actually called that function so right now uh, quickly what we have seen in this hands on is uh, we have seen that sharp develop lets to let us lets us debug a c sharp code and to debug a code what we need to do is we need to rely on a place we need to rely on a concept called as breakpoints and more wisely you choose a breakpoints and its uh, watch variables uh, more precisely you will be able to debug the program so the question like uh, i have a quick reflection question for you what does a watch window let you do like uh, uh, to be more precise does watch window lets you change the value of variable what do you think like so you can think on it and you can recall an answer but uh, the answer right answer here is yes watch window specifically when we are talking about sharp develop id yes it lets you say uh, change the value of variable dynamically through the watch window okay as a further reading i would uh, recommend you explore the link where you have a lot of debugging features of sharp develop explained in detail and this is a bibliography which i referred to make this powerpoint and uh, to be more precise and to have a better knowledge of debugging feature i would expect you to go through the uh, microsoft documentation which uh, talks very detailed uh, the processes steps to debug programs more meticulously and carefully so this is it for this video and thank you